always worry about instant stenosis, which is severe enough to cause recurrent angina after stenting. Of course, drug-eluting stents have reduced but not eliminated the risk of instant stenosis, which is much more common with bare metal stents, as we all know. Although we all used to think that instant stenosis was considered a stable, slow-growing problem, recent studies have reported that one in three patients with instant stenosis present with acute coronary syndromes, so it's not so benign. With this as a background, the question remains what is actually going on within the stent to cause this problem. Is this smooth muscle proliferation, or is it actually neoatherosclerosis? Now in Jack, Park and his associates from Korea review the data as well as clinical and histological studies of drug-eluting stents, which demonstrate evidence, they say, of continuous neointimal growth during long-term follow-up. Furthermore, they present evidence of de novo neoatherosclerosis that has been found on histology, angioscopy, and intravascular images as well. This instant neoatherosclerosis is an important substrate for late stent failure for both BMS and DES, especially during long-term follow-up. What to do about this is another issue and not confronted in this report, but it may support the long-term use of statin therapy for patients with drug-eluting stents, if indeed these data are correct. Most of us probably use statins anyway. I'm Peter Block, and this is a CardiSource Heart Minute.